What's often frustrating about SQL rounds and data science interviews is that there's no clear guideline on how to pass it. And just when you think you did well on SQL round, you end up receiving that dreadful email saying that you were rejected. Yet SQL questions are highly common. Just take a look at interview rounds at these companies. Notice how they all have at least one round that covers SQL. That's why in this video, I want to give an example of what is bad, good, and great response so that you too can succeed in lending top data science job like my clients. Let's get started. Now to know how to ace the SQL round, you have to start by understanding what the interviewers are looking for. It's like that saying, understand to be understood. Generally, interviewers are looking for the following qualities. Did you get the correct solution? How quickly did you solve the problem? Did you write an efficient solution? Did you explain the solution clearly? And as a bonus tip, did you write a query with readability? To get a better understanding of this, let's take a look at an example question based on Google Data Science interview. Suppose that the interviewer asked the following question. Which websites received the most visits as reflected by clicks between 2022 January 1st and 2022 June 1st? And suppose that you are given the following sample tables. Google search activity and Google search websites. How would you solve this? By the way, if you want to follow along and try this question out, you should check out Datama, an SQL practice pad with fang style SQL questions solved by data scientists at Google and Meta. Make sure you stick around for the rest of the video to get a promo code that will give you 50% off from the Datama subscription. Now, let me start off by giving an example of what is a bad response. Suppose that your response was like this. Notice how I start the interview question. I don't even ask clarifying questions to the interviewer. I'm just blankly staring at the screen. It's vital that you ask questions, especially if you're not sure, or at least give the interviewer a cue that you need a moment to think through the problem. I continue to remain silent throughout writing the query, and eventually I run out of time, and I end up with an incomplete solution. If your response is just like this, the interviewer will most likely reject you because of the following reasons. Deviated from what was asked in the question, incompleted the problem, failed to provide any explanation on the query. Now let me show you a good response. I want to start with some clarifying question. Is it fair to assume that there's a many to one relationship between the activity and the website table? And another question I have is that, are there any missing values in the activity table and also the website table as well? Notice that I start off by asking clarifying questions to the interviewer. This ensures that I clearly understand the problem. Okay, so let me go ahead and start this problem. And as I'm solving it, I'm going to explain my thought process out loud. So the first thing that I want is a basically a sub query where I'm joining the website and the activity table. So I write from the Google search websites, join the Google search activity using the website ID. And this is going to be where the website ID is in the select event ID from the Google search activity and where the event type is equal to clicked and the date creation date between 2022-01-01 and 2022-06-01 group by the URL and I'll wrap this in a subquery in this case. Notice that I'm engaging the interviewer with my thought process. Interviewers are not only looking for whether you can solve a problem or not, but also whether you can explain your thought process. After all, data science is a collaborative work, not an individual one. All right, so now that I have the subquery, what I'm going to do in order to get the output is I'm going to order it by the click count in the descending order. So when I run this, yes. I get the right solution. This time around, I actually complete writing the solution in time, which is vital in order to pass the SQL round. So the solution from the good response becomes this. I use joins to merge the website and activities table using website ID. Then I filter the table by filtering on date and event type. Then using group by, I aggregate the filter table by counting the number of rows per URL. Then I output the table by the descending order of the click count. Now, if this is your response, the interviewer will give you a pass on the SQL interview with the following remarks. Completed a solution in time, explained the thought process clearly, but you could write a solution that is more efficient. So although you might have achieved a good response, if you really want to maximize your chance of being selected over all other candidates and your compensation offer, then you have to make every detail count. 
Let's take a look at a great response. I'd like to start with some clarifying questions. Are there many to one relationship between the activities and the event table? And secondly, are there any missing values in those tables? Similar to before, I start off by asking clarifying questions. All right, so let me explain my thought process as I'm solving this. I know right off the bat, this is going to require some complex query, so I'm gonna use CTE to solve this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a website click CTE. And within this CTE, I'll have the website ID. I'm going to count. And this is going to come from the Google search activity where the event type is equal to clicked and the date creation DT between 2022-01-01 and 2022-06-01. Once again, I'm explaining my thought process. And this time around, I'm using CTE to make the query more readable. All right, so now that I have the CTE and I join this CTE to the website table, which contains the URL, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to order this by the click count in the descending order. And when I run this, right on, I get an awesome solution. And this time around, I breeze through the problem solving it in much less time than the attempt that received a good remark. So in finality, the solution from the great response looks like this. Right off the bat, you'll notice the query is a lot more readable because instead of using nested subqueries, I'm using CTE to break it down. And unlike the solution before, instead of joining the website and the activity table, then applying filter using in, what I do is I filter on the activity table first, then join that smaller table to the website table then apply group by. And as a bonus tip, I add comments to make the query more readable. If this was your response, the interview would give you a perfect score. Given that you completed the solution in time, explain your thought process clearly, and wrote an efficient, readable query. So my friends, I hope you found this video helpful in terms of giving you an example of what is a bad, good, and a great response so that you too can pass the data science interview. Now, if you wanna practice more SQL interview questions for your upcoming data science interview, make sure you check out Datama and enter the promo code LAUNCH50 in order to get 50% off on the monthly subscription. The offer is valid until the end of June 2022. I enjoy sharing this content with you, and I'll see you in the next video.